In this video, I want to introduce a few things about focal cerebral disorders. That is, disorders that usually cause focal problems somewhere in the brain. So if we zoom in on the brain a little bit, so recall that when we're talking about the brain, we can divide it up into three main parts. The cerebrum, the main part on top, the brain stem underneath the cerebrum, and the cerebellum behind the brain stem. And recall that focal abnormalities of the cerebellum, if we have a one, one spot of dysfunction somewhere in the cerebellum, that can cause, well, let's zoom out again, that can cause incoordination, particularly of limb movements, like the arm or the leg, or of walking, incoordination of both legs and during the act of walking. Focal lesions in the cerebrum or the brain stem can cause lots of different kinds of abnormalities because the cerebrum and the brain stem perform so many functions. There may be abnormalities of the lower neural functions, including sensory, motor, or autonomic functions. Or, depending on where the lesion is, there may be abnormalities of the higher neural functions, including cognition, emotions, or consciousness. Most of the motor abnormalities that may occur with focal lesions of the brainstem or the cerebrum are upper motor neuron abnormalities. Let me just write UMN for upper motor neuron because most of these lesions will affect upper motor neuron axons as they're passing through the tissue on their way to someplace else like the spinal cord. However, with some brainstem lesions, we can also see lower motor neuron abnormalities. Let me just write LMN for lower motor neuron abnormalities. Let's just zoom in here to take a look at that. And the way you could get lower motor neuron lesions with some brainstem lesions if, is if the soma or their axons are affected, the lower motor neurons that some cranial nerves have inside the brainstem if the lesion affects those structures. Okay, let's zoom back out here. A focal abnormality of the cerebrum often causes sensory or upper motor neuron abnormalities of the contralateral side, the other side, because many of these pathways cross from one side to the other in the central nervous system. In particular, the upper motor neurons, almost all of them cross from one side to the other. For example, a lesion of the right side of the cerebrum here will often lead to upper motor neuron abnormalities on the contralateral side, the left side of the body because most of these upper motor neurons are going to cross from the one side to the other in the central nervous system. And the same is true for a few of the senses, in particular somatosensation and vision. Most of those pathways cross from one side to the other in the central nervous system, so that, for example, an abnormality of the right cerebrum will often cause somatosensory abnormalities on the left side of the body, and abnormalities of vision in the left side of the vision. A few cognitive functions also tend to be performed by just one side of the cerebrum, or at least mostly performed by one side of the cerebrum in most people. For example, the cognitive function of language, turning thoughts into words and vice versa, in most people is performed by the left cerebral hemisphere, so that a lesion of the left side of the cerebrum may cause an abnormality of language function. Let me clean some of this up real quick. Now, many types of pathology may cause focal abnormalities of the brain. Let me list a few of the big categories of pathologies that often do this. So first, let me mention the category of pathology of epileptic disorders, because these are a common cause of focal cerebral syndromes, and in particular involving the cerebral cortex, that outermost layer of the cerebrum. Seizures, these episodes of abnormal electrical activity that are what make up the epileptic disorders, may start in just one focal area of the cerebral cortex, for instance, in one cerebral lobe. And they can either stay in that spot, or some folks will have their seizures spread to involve most of the cerebral cortex on both sides of the cerebrum. And there's a number of names for these types of seizures. We can call these we can call these focal seizures, or there's an older term of partial seizures, and then if they spread from their focal area to, to most of the cerebral cortex on both sides, we then call that secondary generalization. 
So a focal seizure in, starts in one spot and then secondarily generalizes to most of the cerebral cortex. And there are other types of seizures that kind of start all over most of the cortex all at once called generalized seizures, and we'll mention those with the diffuse cerebral disorders. There are many idiopathic disorders, idiopathic just meaning we don't know what causes them in the majority of cases, that can cause a slow degeneration or loss of cells in focal areas of the brain. A common example of this is Parkinson's disease. And with Parkinson's disease, there's a very specific area in the brainstem where we have the slow loss of neurons, a degeneration of these neurons that causes dysfunction in other areas of the brain and causes all the abnormal movements and other abnormalities we can see with Parkinson's disease. For vascular disorders that can cause focal cerebral syndromes, the most common are what we call stroke. And there's a couple of kinds of stroke, the most common being ischemic, where blood flow is cut off to part of the brain and there's injury to that part of the brain. And less commonly, hemorrhagic stroke, where there's bleeding that involves the brain tissue. Traumatic brain injury is a very common example of a mechanical disorder that can affect the brain in a focal way, causing a focal cerebral syndrome. And there are all kinds of different types of trauma and severity of involvement of the brain tissue with trauma. Multiple sclerosis is a fairly common autoimmune disorder that commonly causes focal demyelinating lesions of the brain, leading to focal cerebral syndromes. And then lastly, there are neoplastic disorders, disorders involving tumors that may cause focal cerebral abnormalities. And most commonly, this is a tumor that started somewhere else in the body and then spread to the, to the brain. When le or less commonly, there are primary brain tumors, tumors that arise from cells of the brain itself. Well, a lot more on all of this later. But I just want to introduce the kinds of syndromes and disorders that we can commonly see under this broad category of focal cerebral disorders. And you can see there's a lot. The brain can be affected by all sorts of different things, and we can end up with lots of different syndromes from those different disorders.